Today we're looking at the 2024 Lexus GX. This is a full-size luxury SUV that's one of Lexus's oldest nameplates. But despite that fact, it's gone largely unnoticed and overshadowed for years. The reason is because it has a larger sibling, the Lexus LX. And don't forget, it's more popular and more attractive cousin, the Toyota 4Runner. But here's the thing, the 2024 model kicks off a new generation of the Lexus GX. And Lexus decided to bring back old school cool. I'm talking about new Land Cruiser bones and classic lines that are so chiseled and boxy it makes the LX looks curvy. Now don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of Toyota and Lexus in general, but in today's video I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't get the new 2024 GX. So buckle up and let's get going. To understand why the new 2024 GX is interesting, we have to compare it to the current one, which is the 2023 model. Obviously, Lexus hoped for no less than the stellar 5-star reviews for the 2023 model, but instead it got mixed reviews at best. Let's start with the positive notes. Owners love the current 2023 Lexus GX for its great off-road performance and old-school rarity. Its fuel rating, however, is less impressive. Just 16 miles per gallon for city and highway combined. And that's where the negative reviews really start tumbling in. Owners are unimpressed with its acceleration. I'm talking going 0 to 60 in an average of 7 seconds. And on top of that, its interior features have been criticized for looking dated. But here's the thing about the GX. It's already hard earned its reputation for strong performance on the trail and rugged reliability. But of course, it's human nature to lose appreciation and want something new, better and more. The problem is the GX was stuck on replay and remained roughly the same for a long time. But fortunately, someone at Lexus gave attention to the customer complaints. The new 2024 model kicks off the third generation of the Lexus GX. It's already been described by analysts as what happens to a Land Cruiser at finishing school. And trust me, when I say it's been a long time coming, it has been. Put simply, Lexus completely overhauled the styling, underpinnings, and technology for the new generation. Now, the new 2024 Lexus GX carries that classic boxy, old school, cool feel. But on top of that, Lexus had a distinctive touches like high-tech LED lighting signatures to give it a more modern luxury look. The new GX also got a growth spurt. I'm talking about a 2.36 inch length over the 2023 model and up to 4.52 inches wider depending on the trim. On top of that, the overhang is 0.78 inches higher for better ground clearance. Now the 2024 GX sits on top of the same TNGA platform as the newest Toyota trucks and SUVs do, like the Sequoia, Land Cruiser, Tacoma, and the Tundra. I'm talking about the new Toyota body-on-frame platform, which is lighter and more rigid. It also includes a double wishbone front suspension and multi-link rear suspension with an option for an adaptive variable suspension. The 2024 GX will have two engine options, but only one will be available at the launch, and that's the 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 engine paired with the 10-speed automatic tranny, which will come as standard in the GX. Basically, it's a detuned version of the V6, which we see in the Lexus LX and the base Toyota Hundra. Now, mind you, the blown V6 will output more power than the previous generation GX that came with the naturally aspirated V8. I'm talking 349 horses of power to be exact, 479 pound-feet of torque. The GX comes with a full-time four-wheel drive, a torsion-limited differential, and electronic power steering. The other engine option will be a hybrid, which will come out at a later time. But people are already speculating about this. Some believe the Lexus GX Hybrid will be based on Toyota's iForce Max Hybrid. If that proves true, then it means we'll be looking at a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 with at least 400 horsepower, if not more. It could also be likely the same configuration we see in the Toyota Tundra Hybrid. Here's why the beauty comes in. With the 2024 Lexus GX, you have the option to choose from not one, not two, but six trims. The three core trims are Platinum, Luxury, and Overtrail. All three are available with an A++ designation, which just means extra equipment. The premium and luxury trims are mainly designed for off-roading. Then there's the Overtrail trim. The trim is very different from the premium and luxury trims because it was designed for off-roading and it's more rugged. This is a trim that's causing a stir. One of the off-roading goodies, for example, is a 33-inch Toyo Open Country All-Terrain fitted to 18-inch wheels. The Overtrail trim also has two-tone exterior. By the way, the exterior for this trim is wider and comes with an electronic locker. Also available are optional massage seats for the driver and passenger. It's a perfect off-roader for consumers who like glamping. The premium luxury model's off-road angles are raised to 26 degrees of approach, 23 degrees of breakover, and 21 degrees of departure. The overtrail trim has the same approach and breakover, but 23 degrees of departure, so just a slim difference there. 
Premium Premium Plus Over Trail and Over Trail Plus trims can tow up to 8,000 pounds. The Luxury Trim models can tow 6,990 pounds, whereas the Luxury Plus trim can tow 6,780 pounds. If you're wondering how much cash you need to shell out, well, Lexus hasn't yet confirmed pricing for the 2024 GX. But logic dictates that the 2024 model will start a bit higher than the current 2023 GX, which has a starting MSRP of $59,275. And let's predict that most trims will probably begin under the $92,160, which is the starting price for the current Lexus LS600. By the way, the various options for the GX is the signature Nori Green Pearl. Now, people don't normally like green cars, but this distinct shade is an exception and a rare beauty, pleasing to the eye because it subtly changed shades, depending on the light. If you haven't heard of this hue before, check out my video about car colors. If you're wondering where the GX sits in the Lexus lineup, that's a common question. Unless you're a Lexus fan, you probably won't know the difference between a Lexus LX versus a GX versus a TX. So let me break it down. All three offer three rows of seating. The LX and GX are both full-size SUVs. The TX, on the other hand, is a mid-size crossover. If you want to compare the exterior size, the GX stands between the Lexus LX and the TX. Here's the thing. Lexus says there's an increasing demand for the three-row SUV segment. Lexus simply wants to cover all of its bases. Put simply, the LX is the biggest of the three, and it caters more to the higher-end market. And by that, I mean consumers with deep pockets. Pretty much, you can think of the GX as a mini LX. Now, the GX and TX share many similarities, but two have several key differences. For starters, as I mentioned before, the 2024 GX shares the same body on frame platform as the Toyota Tacoma, Tundra, Land Cruiser, and Sequoia. This is what gives the off roader better wheel articulation, towing, and general robustness. On the other hand, the Lexus TX rides on the same unibody platform as the Toyota Highlander crossover. So it weighs less, it's cheaper to produce, it's more rigid, and has a lower center of gravity. It's also generally safer because the deformation of the cell is more predictable. On top of that, because the body isn't separately shuffling aboard a frame underneath, it typically rides better and has more on-road refinement. By the way, the TX actually replaces the previous generation RXL, which used to be a three-row mid-size crossover. The GX can rightfully boast that it's a real off-roader as it is, but you can also tell by looking at the difference in seating. You can tell Lexus doesn't expect the third row to be used as often in the GX by the fact that it's mounted a whole lot closer to the floor and was designed to fold down as efficiently as possible. Compare that with the TX, and you'll see the TX has a leg up in terms of being a better seven-seater. The reason is the wheelbase of the TX is 116.1 inches, whereas the GX is just 112.2 inches. In other words, you get more length inside the TX, which translates to more leg room for passengers. But here's why you shouldn't get the new 2024 GX. First of all, if you're one of the GX fans who was hoping the new GX will offer better fuel economy, well, we're talking about 17 miles per gallon for combined city and highway driving. It's a whopping one mile improvement compared to the previous model, but too insignificant to boast about. Let's go back to the third row of the GX. It really isn't a full-time row. It's not a very big car to start with. Because of its tall body, the third row is possible, and its payload rating means it can handle the load of extra passengers. But if you're looking to buy a family car to use actively and have a third row full-time, just move onward and look elsewhere. It's not big enough. If you're interested in the GX or off-roading, it's sadly missing one common feature that many other competing off-roaders are offering, and that's a front locker. The GX has an aggressive traction control system, but it doesn't beat the instant response of a front locker. The thing is, the front locker splits power on each axle in half. In other words, each wheel always gets half of the power at all times. There's no delay in traction controls so driving up extremely tough obstacles is noticeably smoother. But unfortunately, Lexus for some reason overlooked this part. Now that all said, you could add a front locker from an aftermarket supplier. Nevertheless, given that many competitors are already offering factory versions, the GX is at a disadvantage here. The 2024 GX also offers poor overall value. You're pretty much paying 60 grand for a fancy 4Runner. In fact, many aftermarket parts that bolt up to a 4Runner, Tacoma, or FJ Cruiser will bolt right up to a GX. Now, technically speaking, the GX is a Land Cruiser, but not the Land Cruiser. Pretty much, the Lexus GX is also a more expensive twin of the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado with a fancy badge and grill. If you're wondering how the Prado differs, here's a quick recap. 
Toyota started making the Land Cruiser in 1951. The classic and famous Land Cruiser J40, which funny enough, almost always gets confused for a Jeep, was sold here in the U.S. from 1960 to 1984. From that point, the Land Cruiser line split into new main branches. One of them was the heavy-duty, hard-working 70 Series, or the J-Wagon family vehicles. The 70 Series then split into two further two, namely the light-duty and heavy-duty. The light-duty 70 Series ultimately got renamed Prado. Basically, the Prado is a Land Cruiser with a smaller engine, narrower body and is supposed to be more economically overall. In 2002, Toyota introduced the third general Land Cruiser Prado, or J120. At that time, America was demanding more SUVs, and Lexus wanted to create an SUV that was more upscale than a forerunner. Since Toyota was trying to expand Lexus as its luxury arm, it let Lexus borrow the chassis from the Land Cruiser Prado to create the GX. But to make the GX a Lexus, the company nixed the diesel four-cylinder and instead added a 4.7-liter V8 from the Toyota Tundra and Land Cruiser. But now you tell me, what do you think of the new 2024 Lexus GX? Do you prefer the previous GX models? What do you think Lexus should change moving forward with its GX models to make them even better? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.